In this section, we will provide you an overview of the steps involved in building an IPPBX using Asterisk. We will cover the essential components and configurations required to set up a functioning IPPBX systems that can handle voice over IP communications. Understanding this overview will lay the foundation for more detailed topics we will cover through the training. Okay, in this section, we'll cover three main parts. Part one focuses on SIP extensions, which allow devices and soft phones to register and make calls through the Asterisk system. Part two covers SIP trunks, which provide connectivity to external telephony networks and service providers. And finally, in the part three, we're going to explore the dial plan, the core component that handles call routing uh, and processing within Asterisk. Understanding these three areas is crucial for configuring and managing a robust, robust and flexible Asterisk PBX solution. The objectives of, for this section are to build a PBX with the following capabilities. One, support IP phones based on the SIP protocol. Two, connect to a VoIP operator using a SIP trunk. And three, enable dialing between extensions within the PBX. And four, allow dialing to external destinations using nine as a prefix. Uh, and five, routing coming calls to an operator or auto attended. So this is the basic PBX. The most basic PBX is the objective of this uh, session. So by the end of, of it, you should be able to configure an Asterisk PBX system with all these features and functionality. The Asterisk grammar consists of three main components, simple groups, inheritance groups, and complex entities. Simple groups are defined by listing all objects in the same line in the, like an example, in the extensions.com file. As an example here, uh, let's see the extension uh, 4001 dial sip slash 4000. Inheritance allows options to be defined before the object declaration. Uh, it's used on Chen Daddy file. So you start declaring and you start setting all the variables and then at the end you declare the, the object, right? That's a different way to, to use it, right? And Finally, complex entities involve each entity receiving a context as demonstrated on the sip.conf and ix.conf file. The example shows two friend types, uh, Cisco and uh, FX Lite, with various parameters like secret, host, context, and type defined for each. So each asterisk configuration file has a different grammar. Pay attention to the, to the grammar. The most difficult one to understand is actually this one, this inheritance. You define everything, and then at the end, you set channel one. So channel one will have the context default, signaling FXSKS, and group equals one. This is typical on the, of the chindaddy.conf. And the other one is you declare the object, and then you, you know, it's much more intuitive here, and then you declare the variables for this specific object. Or define the whole object in the same in, in a single line. Um, you have to check the examples to make sure which type is your configuration file. In this lab scenario, we'll explore how an Asterisk PBX system connects to an internet voice service provider. The Asterisk system, represented by the orange Asterisk logo inside a box, establishes an, inter an internet connection to the VoIP service provider. This allows the Asterisk systems to make and receive calls over the internet, leveraging a VoIP service provider's network. By setting up this connectivity, the Asterisk PBX can facilitate cost-effective voice communication while taking advantage of the features and scalability offered by the VoIP technology. So this is the easiest way to test Asterisk, connect to a voice provider, connect to a soft phone. You don't have to spend a lot of money to learn Asterisk. This slide provides an overview of the installation sequence for an Asterisk PBX system. At the top, we have the trunk layer, then we have the Asterisk layer, and finally, the extensions layer. So when you're configuring your Asterisk, there's a sequence. The best sequence is start creating 
the extensions. Make sure they register, make sure they are connecting to your Asterisk server, and then you can see these extensions in the console. Then go to the step two, configure the trunks. Make sure you're registered on your trunk that you can receive calls and send calls to your trunk. And finally, you start creating your dial plan to make calls to your service provider and to receive calls and or send calls to your extensions. This is the normal installation sequence for Asterisk.